To get rid of those pesky ads, request stories, listen to unlisted and bonus episodes, and to chat with the gang, support us by clicking the description link. I didn't touch your fucking camera. <laughs> this is... This is for everyone to see. Good. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Talk More Me Podcast. My name is John. I'm sitting here with Jen and Nicole. We're talking about tonight the Buttermilk Bluebeard. This, we are live streaming, but for our supporters or so, Talk Us Primos only. And so we're sitting here with our fam, our, our friends, and we're doing one-on-one -on -one chats and love it. We release episodes every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and we live stream every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, let's get it on. Let's do a shot. This is a specific request for Cheyenne. 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 I, know, I know Cheyenne was on the last episode, she so was. maybe she will join us this time. Cheyenne from The Reba Show. Surprise shots. Surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. Yo, what the fuck? Who poured all I this know. shit? Are you fucking it's kidding a, me? That is a that's full. A full that's like seven shots. What the fuck? Who did this? You're, you're like, I don't want to take it. I'll take it. I'll take well, it. Well, take it, big puss. <laughs> I'm already After drunk. After last episode, <laughs> that's what you're going to say? Yeah, I am a big puss. Yeah. <laughs> I'm drunk, dude. <laughs> Go ahead, little puss. Yeah, little puss. Lil you know, that one. Lil That's P. what you call little P. That was beer. That's what Cheyenne requested. A beer. mini beer shot. Oh. Oh, cool. Tonight we're going to 1942. And no one's heard about this, but we're starting with a 73-year-old widow named Is Isabella Venata. And Nicole's going to be reading some stuff tonight from some really old newspapers. <laughs> All right, this... I'm not drinking anymore because I'm feeling it. Yeah, I'm drunk. This woman, we're starting with this woman, Isabella Van Nata. She's 73. She's a, a widow of some 15 years now, and she meets a man. So if you want to read this, Nicole. First time in years. And now for the first time in years, Isabella Van Nata was happy. So happy that on November 13th, 1945, she wrote to a friend... I find myself thanking God almost hourly for all of the good that has pouring into me in the last few weeks. You remember Mr. Klein who you met? Well, he's been here almost a month, came up from Southern California, where he has been building some apartments, saved for me. He has one on the first floor that is saved for me, a two-room apartment with a bath, Nice new stove and mechanical refrigerator, hardwood floors, and has it partly furnished and has left the rest of me to select. Just think, Sue, of me coming into such good fortune. Oh, God has been so good to me. Mr. Klein seems to have so much interest in me and how he could... I can't. I understand. She's writing her friend. Just think, Sue, of me... You know, she's a widow and she's she's wealthy and she's writing her friend this. Oh, Mr. Alfred Klein is who we're talking about tonight. You guys probably have not have heard this because no one has covered this. I can promise you that mm. the paper says, quote, poor Miss Van Nata. Three weeks later, her home, air quotes, home, was a crematory urn. And oh. her new husband's interest, which is also in air quotes, in this frail little old lady was the subject of police investigation. But what does this guy do with buttermilk? <laughs> does he, like, put them in the buttermilk basins? No. All right. Does he make them pancakes? Yes, Jen, that's it. Now, keep with me because this goes one after the other in rapid succession. We're going to cover a lot of killings. There's not any details other than them being dead, but in October of 1943, he meets another elderly lady. Within three weeks, this lady, this Van Nata, the one that said, just think, Sue, of me coming into such good fortune... And he's building all these apartments and he wants me to live in these apartments. Oh, my God. She's 73 years old. You know, she's a widow, mm -hmm. a widow for some time. So she wants that reconnection with anyone. Three weeks later, after meeting this man, she's dead. Oh, no. Of a heart condition. Oh, uh, like a natural heart condition? From what her death certificate says, yes. I don't believe that, but okay. <laughs> A week later, Miss Elizabeth Hunt Lewis meets this man, and this man is a churchgoer. He's a good Christian. His name is Alfred Klein, and he sings in the church choir, and he's got a really good voice, and he's kind of handsome for a 55-year-old, you know? Oh, so she's a cougar. Yeah, so she is this Miss Elizabeth Hunt. 
Lewis, the next one, is a 65-year-old Oakland, California widow. So he's a cub. Is that what they call the cougar chasers? <laughs> cub. Isn't that, no, I think that's a thing. Isn't that what they call the cougar chasers? I don't know. Someone tell me. Someone Google it. I feel like John should know this. Because so. he was, because you met him through the cashmere cougars? Yes. All right, if you want to read this. So I'm pulling all this from real old newspapers. I like doing these stories sometimes, these really old type of stories that you can only find stuff in newspapers. You know, I thought it'd be kind of interesting. But if you want to read this. Mrs. Lewis was astonished, but nonetheless pleased to hear a proposal of marriage from the lips of this blonde gentleman, 11 years her junior. She accepted Clyde. Apparently, he's kind of a good looker. So you want to see a picture of this guy? I feel like if I get to that age and someone proposes to me, I'm going to say no, because I'll be suspicious. Because you'll be so fabulously wealthy that it will. No, I'll, let's be real. I'll be dirt poor. But, you know. <laughs> no, this, this is... podcast by then should be this is... making some thing yeah we we're making something he looks like one of the presidents like herbert <laughs> hoover. yeah yeah mm-hmm. herbert hoover that's his lawyer right oh. there <laughs> on the left is klein no no on the right this is klein right here that's klein yeah yeah see alfred klein right consults with his attorney wait but i thought he was only like 55 why does he look he's like 80 oh maybe because well, the years have passed jen you're right <laughs> Because people don't look their age anymore. 1943, Miss Lewis, Elizabeth Hunt, sees this guy, Alfred Klein, in the choir. He can sing God's good word, and she's immediately smitten. She's been lonely and depressed for 10 years now since her husband passed. She's a, quote, twittering 65-year-old California widow. Klein, within weeks, gets on one knee. Listen, I know this is sudden. I know that you're... You, you're a widow and and everything. And I know that we've only been seeing each other for three weeks, but I feel something so real. Wait, so, three weeks? Yeah, three weeks. I mean, she doesn't, ha- I mean, she's 65. At that age. But that's like from now, like going back to when I went back home to Massachusetts. To three yeah, that's that's basically how, how many weeks you took off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I only took two weeks off, so fuck you. Actually... <laughs> one and a half because I was there for one episode. Yes, I will marry you, is what she says. Oh, I'm so excited. And then Alfred Klein says, Okay, that's great news, but before, and she's wealthy, she owns a bunch of homes, she owns at least one that I saw home in Oakland, California. But before we wed, will you sell your Oakland home and move with me? Start anew in Florida. We'll start over. We'll sit in the sunshine in the beautiful Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville is nice. Can you remind me what year this is? 1943. Oh, okay. So this is before like Florida became a problem. <laughs> During the war also. This is still in the war. Oh, don't worry about the paperwork with the bank, he says. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Just give me your information. I'll sell that house for you. And then we'll move to Florida together. Now, this is three weeks after they meet. And they meet in church. So, of course, he's not some kind of con man. No, no, of course. He's a, he's a man of God. He sings for the choir. He sells her estate in Oakland. They get on a train. They're heading to Florida. But hold on. I need to stop in Chicago for business first. I have some business because I'm a, a wealthy entrepreneur. I have some business some investments down there that I need to close out before we start our brand new life. At this time, she writes one of her friends. She calls her new husband a darling. They're on a train from Port Royal, Michigan to Chicago. While he, while she was writing this friend, calling this man a darling, Alfred Klein, the buttermilk bluebeard, was in the next car over making the acquaintance of another elderly widow. <gasps> oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> That two-timing son of a gun. Yeah, he's got all the cougs. All the cougs. No one, no one Googled that for me. I need to know what that term is. A cougar chaser. I used to be a cougar chaser. I'm not gonna lie. Can you give me one of those? Uh, Lori replied to answer Jen's question about what a the man is called when chased by a cougar is either the a manther or cub. A manther. A no, man. that's when he's chased by a cougar. This has nothing in it. Um, but when yeah, it, it's but just trash. A I want cha- you to throw it away. 
<laughs> well, oh, like are, a are you job only is? going are we to going get back to, to 1943? Jen? And John, you guys are the only ones that are allowed to have. Nikwees wants one. What are you talking about? Give the other two up. And the thing's over. Do you know who you're talking to? Yeah, we're talking to a <laughs> yeah, man, and the I women do. are going to rally. Down so give with us the a, patriarchy. Give us some fucking drinks. There ain't none over here. They're all empty, yo. I've been drinking them. No, you haven't. We've been watching They're all empty? On the train, Alfred Klein, that new darling husband, is making the acquaintance of another elderly widow named Miss Delora Krebs. Now, she is extremely wealthy. Mm. And he really wants to get in her nuggets. What is his other fiance say she doesn't know she's she's in her own cabin writing trains were so fancy back in the day they're on this train the new miss elizabeth hunt klein and her new mr klein and she starts not feeling well oh oh my stomach <clears throat> she's like i need coffee no you don't no, need- no you don't need coffee coffee will make it worse you don't need coffee what my my, my grandma used to tell me is drink buttermilk buttermilk will make you feel better Oh, will it? Drink some buttermilk. Several letters were sent to her friends from train stations from California to Florida. Those letters started saying that this elderly lady wasn't feeling well. Perhaps it was train sickness. Who knows? So the letters started coming in that she's sick. October 22nd, 1943, these newlyweds finally arrive in Jacksonville, Florida. They're at the Hotel Windsor. November 3rd, so a week later, Klein, Alfred Klein, the husband, calls a Dr. C.W. Johnston. Says, my new wife isn't feeling well. She's ill. She's suffering from headaches, dizziness, vomiting. The doctor gave her a script, but the medicine set untouched completely. The doctor came and checked on the new Mrs. Klein and saw that the medicine was not being taken. In fact, there was she was doing nothing but drinking buttermilk. Klein looked at the, at the doctor and whispered real softly in his ear. And this is going to be something that he says over and over and over. These exact words, quote, she won't take her meds, her religious belief, you know, (laughs) that's like the thing, her religious belief. But he only whispers it to the doctors. Right. November 8th, she dies. An autopsy stated that the cause of death was dilation of the heart. Within a few days after that, he's in the church. He's not part of this new choir because he just joined but he does sing some of the hymns and he catches the eye of a 66 year old widow of an indiana veterinarian named alice sally carpenter this is her right here she kind of looks like my grandma that's her we don't have many photos of this Mm. i wanted to do a story that no one's really heard of and when you do those there's not really much those are your favorite yeah i guess Within a few days of his wife, Elizabeth, dying, he meets this Allie Sally Carpenter, 66 years old. And this is what she tells her friends. Tells her friend. In February 12th, 1944, Mrs. Carpenter burst into the Tampa home of her great friend, Mabel Chase, exclaiming, Mabel, what do you think? I've met a man who wants... She stopped to giggle. Well, he says he wants me to manage his California apartments at $250 a month. But I think he wants to marry me. Anyway, we're off for California right now, driving. Mabel Chase wished Alice Carpenter happiness and kissed her goodbye. Hmm. You know what? When my family went out to California, we like drove up at, up the coast. We started in southern LA. And we drove all the way up to San Francisco, and um, we stopped at this place called Pea Soup Andersons. And I don't know why this story is reminding of me of Pea Soup Andersons, but it was the best pea soup ever. Cheyenne ask are all of these ladies wealthy that the answer is yes good question that's a great question i wish i could rent a place for 250 dollars a month i mean i own my own home but i wish that was my mortgage inflation they are all wealthy widows so that was part of his mo obviously he's killing all these ladies okay. oh yeah are they like getting high cholesterol from all the buttermilk they're drinking <laughs> i'm seriously asking now she gets sick pretty quick and they don't even leave florida yet they just booked a train they just booked their train pass to california he says i've got all these apartments and i i need to manage them i have to go back there i'm only in florida for a vacation his his new wife died 
three days ago in Florida. Yeah, he doesn't care. No, he doesn't care. I'm only here for vacation, and then I'm back to Florida, and then I'm back to California. Will you join me? I, listen, I know this is spontaneous. I know that this is soon. We just met days ago, but I see something in you, Jen, that I've never experienced before. It's you. Yeah, yeah well, you're married, so <laughs> it's not going to fly. <laughs> They're in the hotel lobby. They haven't even left. And she says, yes. You want to read this one? Healthy, exuberant, happy only yesterday. Now Alice Carpenter sat pale and listless in the lobby. Alice Carpenter's eyes were on the blonde man who was signing the register at the hotel desk. Two rooms he took, one in the name of Alfred Klein and the other for Alma Carter of San Francisco. Alma Carter? Who'd be that? Who is that? Alma Carter? That's not her name. Her name is Alice Sally Carpenter. Why would he why would he register her under Alma Carter? Oh my god. That Natasha is- said that Pea Soup Anderson's is gone now. That's tragic. I'm so sorry. I need to take a second. Go ahead. Story. That's rough. Off. I love that. <clears throat> sorry. She, sorry. I need to I need to grieve. Go she on. she is deathly ill in the lobby. She's like Oh, oh. He hears, she hears the man that just asked her to marry him to register two rooms, one for him, an Alfred Klein, and one for his aunt, an Alma Carter. She's dying in this hotel room lobby, and he registers her as his aunt. <laughs> Fucking nuts, right? <laughs> The doctor comes into the lobby because she is obviously very ill. He goes up to him and and he says, the doctor says, why has she not been taking her medication? Well, her religious beliefs, you know, (laughs) that's what he says. The cause of death of her was February, on February 21st, her cause of death was endocarditis. So what do you see here? There's always a pattern here. There's always heart trouble. There's always a doctor coming in. There's always meds not taken. There's always buttermilk. Her death certificate still reads Alma Carter. That's not even her name. She was cremated on the same day. That same day, Klein goes to the bank, cashes out her savings account, and looks for his next victim. The next day, he's back on a train to Chicago, and he meets up with Miss Krebs, the one that he was in the other car with, meeting the acquaintance. Acquaintance of. She has a net worth of $365,000, which do you want to take a guess in today's money how much that is? Wait, $165,000? $365,000. In 1945? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 1943. Uh, $2 million. A billion dollars. Do, do you have any idea how inflation works? Nope. <laughs> Are we in hyperinflation right now? What the fuck? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Math was never my thing. <laughs> Math was never my thing. That, that that would mean the inflation rate is like 100% a year. <laughs> listen, listen, the gas went from like 197 when I first got here to like $5 three weeks ago. So I figured inflation was pretty heavy, but I guess I was wrong. <laughs> All right. No, so it was, it's not Putin. It's a bunch of other things. So I'm sorry, Jen, you were a little off. So three hundred sixty-five thousand in 1943 is worth seven point five million today. I was only half a million off, less than half a million, actually. They were married in. You Ju- said a billion. Yeah, <laughs> that's more than a half a million. Jen, do you know how math works? No, I don't. I'm a school counselor. <laughs> no. Wow, that's. I didn't think it would be that much. Yeah. Wow. So she was real wealthy. So he's never had someone this wealthy before. Usually it's he'll make like 20,000 in today's cash with these. And there were 11 of them that he did this to 11 widows. But this one, this one's the jackpot. However, there's consequences or there's certain things that come with a cougar of this wealth. Right. She has family lawyers, family physicians, people that will ask questions if she mysteriously dies. OK, so I'd like to request that that math be taken out of the episode. No, I'll probably just loop uh. it. <laughs> Today's episode is just Jen doing math or <laughs> trying to doing math and naming countries. All right. I showed you Alfred Klein. I'm going to get those. I'm going to go through his background pretty quick. Son of a well to do St. Louis merchant married at 30. But before that, he lived on a farm in Kansas growing up. Two small sons. He moved into Fort Collins, Colorado. He had a wife who died suddenly. No one knows if he killed her or not, but most likely probably did. And this is about the wife. Abandoning his wife and children, Klein eloped with 18-year-old Anna Bell O'Loughlin. 
She died within a few months. The circumstances of the untimely death of Klein's schoolgirl in Amarada are far from clear. He sent the nude body of the girl back to her parents without a word of explanation. Mm, that's kind of screwed up. You know, so his real wife died suddenly. He takes his three year old or he takes his son. This is crazy right here. He takes his son away where for three years he wore a, quote, outward cloak of virtue. <laughs> this is some old timey shit. Meaning on the inside, he was crooked. <laughs> He started working in real estate, and this is in the, tw the late 20s, early 1929. He had his first forgery check. He actually forged a check from a woman that he barely knew, and she was real wealthy. This is what he told the judge. Sing in choir. But you see, judge, he expostulated. I have never been in trouble before. Why, I sing every Sunday in the Trinity Methodist Sun Church Choir. It's true, I forged signatures on, blonde, on bond from the Silver Estate Building and Loan Company for whom I worked. But I only used the bonds to borrow money on money I needed to keep my poor motherless sons in school until things were breaking better for me. Oh, judge, be light on a poor man. You mean the mothers that you killed? <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's not really a stand-up character. I would say not. He forged his first check in 1929, two to five years, Colorado State Prison. He travels a lot. When he was arrested, they searched his bag. In the bag was a wig, several false mustaches, <laughs> which is fucking great, <laughs> and makeup. There was also a fine collection of pen and legal forms. One of those was signed by an extremely wealthy widow, a chari charity, A. Inyart, a widow in Colorado. This woman was not even dead, nor did she even really know the man who took her identity like that. But this document said that she had bequeathed Albert Klein $3 million. Detectives tore up the, the false will and then they they contacted the elderly widow and she said she had no intention of dying, but she didn't want to press charges. A year later, he's released. He lives in Portland under the name Dr. William J. Worm. <laughs> Fucking weird. And then I'm not going to go through all this, but he he basically does the same same kind of thing. 1931, Reno, Nevada, married Carrie May, May Porter, 73. She's dead in three weeks. He gets $20,000. In June 1932, he actually built a reverend of $11,000. Two days later, he dies. His fourth wife, a Bessie Van Sickle, which is kind of sad because she looks like such a sweet person. Mm. Becky Van S Sickle. I know someone with that last name. She was the fourth one to go. Bessie dies. Six months later, death struck again and Bessie Bessie followed her brother to the grave, leaving her husband in a state of $26,000, which included her deceased brother's $1,200. One month later, and San Bernardino Martin Frame 60 staggered from his room to the hotel of the Antlers Hotel. Frame, a Los Angeles businessman, stammered, I'm sick and frightened. All right, let me go over his MO real, real quick so this will make sense. Here's the MO of this guy, Alfred Klein. He's supposedly killed 11. Number one, find a rich old widow and marry her. Number two, take her to a hotel in another state. You got to get her out of the state she's in. Mm. Number three, serve her poisoned buttermilk, right? And she wouldn't even know it's poison because it's sour as it is already there you go and he actually admitted that the reason that we drank the buttermilk is because that shit is fucking sour oh so you knew it was sour and when i said it was sour you said no and i said well, yes now that you can it taste tastes it like sour cream but now like that you cream. taste it you can you wouldn't be able to tell there's poison in there like i put poison in yours and you couldn't tell yeah you drank it first bitch <laughs> I told y'all, no one listen to me. Number three, serve her poison bur buttermilk. Uh, number four, obtain the death certificate from the doctor. So that was also part of the MO. The doctor would come, he would get a script. Oh, she ain't taking her medicine, or he ain't taking his medicine, you know, religious beliefs. Then the doctor would, would file the death under some heart condition, whether it's a heart attack or whatever, is always some heart condition. 
Then number five, he would ship the body to another state to have it cremated. Number six, he would forge documents and collect assets. So continuing with the MO, just to kind of wrap it up, he would romance wealthy win- widows, travel to other states, give her buttermilk, convince a doctor about the heart problems, and ship the body and then cash cash out the bank accounts. Was he mainly... The, the inside the buttermilk were barbiturates and cyanide. Was he mainly going from coast to coast because of like the traffic? weather and such no he was going just for Anywhere? the array of victims he would meet so he would stop in state to state to state meet these widows in church you know where they're probably most vulnerable and you can tell a widow there because there's no right husband how long him. would he stay in each state for like couple- weeks he would marry them within weeks and then on to the next klein he insisted had declined to let anyone including the maid, entered the room and had also refused to call a doctor. Furthermore, Klein had forced him to drink great quantities of buttermilk. So that was the uh, that was the the reverend at the church. So he's he's doing that. He doesn't care male or female. He's going to if you got money, he's going to try to buttermilk you. <laughs> what? Great verb. Now, now Klein, after, yeah. the, after the reverend drank the buttermilk and died, Klein was initially arrested. They found in his possession hypnotic drugs, barbiturates, and quick-acting poisons, pen and paper with legal, legal forms, some signed with forgery. And in 1934, they sent him to Folsom Prison, prison Folsom Prison, the Johnny Cash Prison. Mm-hmm. Now, in prison is when he finally confesses, but he confesses to an older inmate, a trustee is what they call him, and just another inmate. They were actually cleaning the gallows, and he confesses, quote, a lot of people have come to their deaths in this gallow room simply because they didn't know as much as other people about other people do about killing without leaving any clues, if you want to read this. So he's a buttermilk killer, right? He'll just, he'll disguise the poison in the buttermilk, and you drank, that's why we drank it, so you can kind of see that it would. Liquid in which to serve poison poison because its sour taste concealed from the drinker the flavor of noxious additions. He knew of a woman, a Carrie Mae Porter, who was killed that way. He said he did not say Carrie Mae was his late wife. Hmm. So now this is just testimony from the prisoners that he told that to. But anyway, we're going back real quick. You remember the the lady on the train, Miss Kreb? This is her right here. She was the last one to go, and she was the one worth $7.5 million. As you see there, it says she died four months later, and and it was investigated quite a bit. This is his downfalling was her. But however, they didn't have any evidence for for poisoning, poisoning. All the death certificates said heart problems. All they found was a shit ton of buttermilk. So he kills her. He tries to forge uh, her checks to, to deplete her savings account. He's arrested and he's sent to prison long term. He is convicted of nine counts of forgery, 134 years in prison they couldn't get him for murder but they did put him in there for the rest of his life um, however he didn't last but not even a year he he died of a of a heart attack <laughs> that's the story well you know what that's, <laughs> that's justice because that's what he said his wives died of and that's the whole fucking story <laughs> like, there's nothing the more. dairy pirate <laughs> Uh, guys, I wanted to do that short kind of old story because that the one with Rateo was a lot, man. And I wanted something, you know, that was a lot on me, like reading that shit throughout the week. Yeah. But I hope you guys like that. Half of the, the ladies he killed, their death, death certificates didn't even have their real name on them. Mm. He, would, he would fake the name and then cremate them in a different state. He would always... And another thing that's unique is he'll do it state to state. So he'll kill in this state, Florida, let's say, and then have the body cremated in Georgia, you know, and then it's just impossible to trace at that point. Right. So they did get him for forgery and they put him in prison for the rest of his life, but he he died. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. No one has really heard about the guy. I just kind of thought it was interesting. Anyway, I hope you guys like this, uh, this Talk More Me podcast. And for, for you guys that are on here right now, we'll, we'll be on the Discord. All right. Well, until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people.